review time. This is a Riot LED bulb. It comes from Ikea. What's special about this is the two-pack uh, cost me four dollars Canadian, but a dollar fifty American per bulb, uh, which is crazy cheap. Um, if you look at my YouTube channel, I've uh, often been studying LED bulbs and uh, tracking how cheap they're uh, getting. But I must say, I was really surprised at this price. I don't know if they're selling this as a lost leader or it's just like insanely cheaply built, but uh, that's an amazing price for an LED light bulb. So here's an interesting touch. One of the tricky things about this A-shaped bulb is it's fairly hard to get the wires to connect to a circuit board since it wasn't originally designed like that. This base is interesting. It actually has a pin here and of course you can see the side walls exposed and they created a little tiny spring connector so when the base just comes on it to actually make contact with uh, the base here. I haven't seen that before. It's sort of a clever bit of engineering. So here's the top sawn off and uh, this is becoming the sort of go-to topology I think for the cheapest of the light bulbs. Basically a circuit board here on an aluminum backing and a dome here which is used to loft the light to the correct directions. There's a UL listing number on the substrate here, but the whole bulb itself was uh, done by a different standardization company called uh, ETL, uh, which is interesting. I've never seen that before. Okay, two circuit boards. Uh, the uh, emitter array here, of course, and then plugged onto it a, a single-sided board, which has the control electronics. Uh, this white uh, goo is uh, thermal paste, I should presume. Uh, it goes on to this base here, but the, the base actually isn't made out of metal. It's just plastic, uh, which isn't usually a very thermally conductive uh, material. So... I'm surprised they went to the trouble of trying to conduct heat from this aluminum substrate to what appears to be a relatively poor conductor of heat. Let's um, take a look at the actual circuit board. It's uh, relatively sophisticated, surprisingly, given the uh, really crazy low cell price. Okay, well this is a first. Uh, this assembly has uh, no hand soldering, and uh, perhaps it also helps with the, the low cell price. The very clever connector here that goes to the uh, the base of the bulb, of course, is soldered in by a machine. And the connector that goes to the emitter array also looks like it's assembled by a machine. So uh, that is a first, actually, of all the teardowns of bulbs I've done. So other interesting things, uh, the marking, uh, UL marked uh, assembly, I'll just pop up the vendor of the uh, raw circuit board. Single-sided assembly, no surprise. Uh, obviously, at this sell price, you wouldn't expect much more than a single-sided board. The uh, controller here uh, is marked in a way that I can't exactly find the match, but it looks like an 8022. Seems very similar to this data sheet, uh, but that one shows a transformer. And the weirdest thing about this inductor here is actually only three, uh, three connections, not four. Uh, there's two here, and there's one here. So, I've never seen anything quite like that. It's actually marked on the, as the assembly uh, L1 on this side, and then L2 on the other side. So, taking a look at this transformer again, I uh, went a little further on the data sheet and uh, to zoom into the topology here, you can see actually it's a, a tapped inductor actually topology. Again, something I haven't seen before, so it explains why that transformer, or what appeared to be a transformer, uh, only had three leads on it. So the packaging says it's uh, not dimmable, and uh, boy is it never not dimmable. I've never seen such a stroboscopic bulb, uh, even when trying to turn it full on and you turn it down a bit, uh, yeah, just clearly not a demo bulb. Uh, so this is a flicker test. The bulb's here. There's a solar cell here. And it's connected to my oscilloscope can I, so I can get some sort of reading as to whether the bulb is flicker. Uh, this one does have flicker. You can see this uh, upper be behavior here where it's uh, oscillating. And uh, if you were to put the scope into an AC coupled mode, you could actually then zoom further into the actual uh, waveform and get a better sense as to how high it is. Uh, it's fairly significant, actually. You don't normally see this much flicker on a light bulb. Uh, I guess that must be one of the other compromises that's being made here uh, with uh, such a crazy low cell price. Well, there you go. Every time I think I'm finished uh, analyzing LED light bulbs uh, because they've reached their end point in terms of cost, something always seems to show up which challenges that preconception. Uh, for $2, uh, you get 400 lumens of light bulb, which uh, is, of course, just an insanely low price. Amazing.